My name is Sasha Meinrath. I am the director of the Open Technology Institute and vice president of the New America Foundation, which is based out of Washington, D.C. And I've been here at the event meeting up with a lot of different folks here in the hallways and uh, having a number of good conversations. Uh, and, you know, most of what I know from Freedom Online in Tunisia is based upon what I read in the news. And so it's really an honor to be here talking with folks that are working on the ground, people working at 404 Lab and others. I, I actually very much wish I had gotten here a day or two earlier and been able to take part in the Hack Fest because I think that's where the real information is being swapped. I think that's where we're learning a lot about what the on-the-ground situation actually looks like. The role of which? Well, I'm waiting to see meaningful reforms happen and be really spread out. I'm waiting to see how civil society is included in the decision making and uh, the regulatory structures. You know, I think there's a real opportunity for Tunisia to demonstrate to the world how we have an inclusive participatory democracy when it comes to internet governance. Uh, I think we're at the very beginning of actually seeing that meaningfully and effectively integrated into decision-making processes, but my hope is that this is the start of a series of reforms that will really place power back in the hands of the people. And how do you think going to help on this? How do I think which? How do you think you're going to help on this? Who's going to help on that? You and the foundation. Uh, so a lot of our work is in developing distributed communications infrastructure, the Commotion Wireless Project, also known as the Internet in a Suitcase. Uh, we also do a lot of work in terms of providing additional resources, analysis on what's been happening in terms of reforms, legal language, etc. But a lot of what we do, you know, I run a group of technologists. A lot of what we do is meeting up, you know, in, in the various bars and, in, you know, street corners with people that are working on the ground, identifying from them what their needs are and, and helping either directly work with them to get those needs fulfilled or to interconnect them with other civil society groups that have resources that can help them out. So I see a lot of my work and that of my teams as sort of a support for a lot of the NGOs, civil society groups, hack labs, and etc. that are doing the hard work here in Tunisia. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. So my name is Leon Williams and I'm the director of Free Press Unlimited. My message to the Tunisian people is that you have to know that the struggle for freedom that you've carried out in the last years is a difficult one, but we support you on this, you know. I think it's very important, the kind of freedom that you've achieved, and I think that you have to understand that freedom never comes easy. You have to fight for it. And so the new government is still already all, you know, curious and interested and also very uh, scared of some of the bloggers and is putting them in jail. These are things that are happening, but it's bound to happen in any struggle for freedom. So I want you to know that, you know, we support you, continue the struggle. There's many international organizations, many citizens who are still putting their hope on Tunisia to bring the goods of freedom to the Arab world. You're the best country positioned to take this further. So uh, take courage and heart and uh, keep on working. We will support you uh, with all the projects and stuff that we have. And I wish you all the best. Is that what you want? Wait. Donc, euh, je parlais d'une anecdote où notre euh, secrétaire général maintenant euh, peut aller euh, tranquillement en Tunisie, ça fait déjà deux ans, alors qu'avant, euh, le 14 janvier, c'était vraiment pas le cas, donc ça, c'est un vrai changement. Et euh, euh, aujourd'hui, ce qui se passe en Tunisie, j'en parlais hier avec mes collègues euh, sur place, euh, c'est vraiment le, le début de la révolution, et maintenant, euh, tout est en train de, de se construire. On voit qu'il y a encore des gros problèmes avec euh, le cas de Wadel 15 et d'autres euh, blogueurs et journalistes qui sont euh, encore embêtés pour des problèmes de liberté d'expression. C'est que le début. Nous, RSF, on, on sera là pour euh, soutenir euh, tous les gens qui se battent pour la liberté d'informer et je voudrais juste parler de, de, de quelques initiatives, nous chez RSF on travaille beaucoup avec des, euh, des hackers ou des, des bidouilleurs et je vois qu'à Tunis il y, a, il y a pas mal de, de, de labs qui se sont créés, ça c'est une, une très très bonne nouvelle, c'est parce qu'il y a 
il y a la technologie est en train d'être euh, diffusée. Les gens, ont, avant, déjà, avaient déjà les moyens, mais maintenant, on peut travailler librement sur des moyens pour communiquer librement. Et euh, on travaille avec ça. Il y a des belles initiatives à Tunis, à Monastir, à Sousse. Et euh, ça, c'est vraiment extrêmement intéressant. My name is Joelle Fiss. I work at the US-based organization Human Rights First. We work a lot on issues that relate to freedom of expression around the world and I work specifically on questions that relate to blasphemy. Uh, you know when somebody criticizes or insults religion, they're deemed blasphemous and then often they're thrown into prisons, they suffer human rights violations, um, their, a lot of uh, their rights are violated due to accusations of blasphemy. And uh, I uh, am here to talk about that, I will be talking about that at the panel tomorrow, about these human rights violations caused by blasphemy laws. And I must say I'm very hopeful because, first of all, um, blasphemy has been taken, a, a clause on blasphemy has been taken out of the Tunisian constitution as a result of negotiations between the political parties, and that is excellent news for freedom of expression in Tunisia. And right now, as we are in this conference, uh, uh, Tunisia is deciding its constitution institutional future and it's such a historical period it's such an exciting period and I'm very happy to share this with Tunisians I'm I'm the policy director at Access, accessnow.org. We're an international NGO that uh, defends and extends the digital rights of users at risk around the world. Uh, we do this in sort of three ways. We combine uh, a global movement of users in about 190 countries who are signing petitions, going to protests, mobilizing around digital rights issues. Uh, a policy shop that does uh, practical policy recommendations to governments and corporations and supports other civil society groups. And then a tech arm that is providing sort of 24-7 digital security helpline uh, to activists uh, around the world and sort of building new technologies to support them. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to be here at the Freedom Online conference, you know, to sort of see the continuation of sort of governments, uh, civil society actors from around the world, including here in Tunisia, uh, and, and companies, of course, to discuss how to sort of advance uh, human rights in the, in the digital sphere. Um, and, you know, we are very excited to sort of see the strides that Tunisia has made. Um, in fact, our helpline that I just mentioned is, is based here in Tunisia. Um, seeks to work with the, the local Tunisian community as well as sort of that across the world. Um, and to help sort of realize both uh, through technology and particularly in, in, in countries that are still getting to a point of full respect for human rights, uh, but also uh, in, in sort of in a policy sphere to help advance these kinds of dialogues. Um, and so it's been a very interesting conversation so far and I look forward to sort of seeing uh, where it goes into the future. Mohamed Mohamed Taraki from the Jordan Open Source Association. Uh, in Jordan, right now we are facing the problem of censorship. Uh, we had free internet since 1996, but as of 2010 things are changing. Uh, my message to the Tunisian people is stay strong. You cannot censor the internet. The internet treats censorship as an error and tries to route around it. So. Uh, it might be difficult now, but there are lots of good people working towards fighting censorship and, and I think uh, I'm very hopeful that uh, we can look towards a future where there is no censorship whatsoever. So just stay strong and stay on the, the goal.